We're out here at the Willard Sparks Research Center, and David, they do a lot of research on cattle and, and efficiency, and this is a time that, that producers are gonna need some of that research that's done out here whenever they're making those livestock uh, decisions. It is. In fact, what you see behind me is a set of heifers on a feed efficiency research project, mm -hmm. and that's what all this pneumatic sounds are going yeah. on behind me when they put their heads in and pull it out of that bunk. But, but yeah, it is. It's a time where people may be looking for options to extend ownership on their cattle because of the current market situation. One thing we thought about that some folks might be thinking about is retaining a few more heifers this year. Right. What, what are some of the things, what, what are some of the benefits, if there are any, to maintaining those and retaining those? I mean, a heifer uh, could give you more marketing flexibility, mm -hmm. you know, because you can, you can sell a, a yearling as a feeder calf. Mm -hmm. You can go ahead and expose more heifers to uh, bulls through the breeding season. Uh, and then perhaps have the flexibility to sell red heifers. You mm -hmm. could simply retain those red heifers and increase the size of your cow herd. Uh, or you could possibly even hang on to them, calve them out as two-year-olds, uh, get, get quite a bit more time in the market and merchandise them as cow-calf pairs. There's quite a few things to consider, but if, you know, if you're just gonna keep more females than you usually do, probably the things to start with are uh, keep females out of the really good cows. Right. Yeah, so, you know, one thing, for example, would be um, highly heritable traits that you really don't want. And that would be, you know, you probably wouldn't want to keep any of those heifers. In other words, go ahead and sell them early. Right. Out of cows that are wild, right. uh, out of cows that have a bad udder, uh, that's a relatively highly heritable trait as well. Uh, wouldn't want to keep heifers out of cows that don't shed their hair coat early in the in the spring or summer. Another couple of things that people might want to consider, uh, especially if you've got a set of heifers that you don't have much genetic information or you don't have much in the way of records on, like like their birth dates, for example, yep. uh, would be ha visit with your veterinarian about the possibility of reproductive tract scoring mm -hmm. those heifers. That will give you an indication of whether or not they're gonna be early in terms of puberty mm -hmm. and, and how good of an, a chance they would have of breeding early in that first breeding season. The second thing the veterinarian can do along with that reproductive tract score is measure their pelvic width and height and heifers with larger pelvic area are less likely to have dystocia problems or uh, calf, calf birth problems. Uh, the second thing uh, producers might want to consider is a genomic test. Um, the companies that provide those for commercial cattle uh, will provide you with an index so that you can rank those heifers for uh, value or profitability uh, from highest to lowest. And then if they have the opportunity to maybe pull off the bottom end, it's be another good culling tool. So this really is an opportunity for producers to, to really get to know their, their herd and, and make yeah. some overall decisions of quality. Yeah, I mean, th these, are, these are steps that we recommend every year. And so we just thought maybe we'd just remind people of that because this year more people might be considering retaining more heifers than they usually do. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Dave Lawman, Extension Livestock Specialist here at Oklahoma State University.